we're at Carter's Court. It's a subdivision of 19 new homes that we're building in the Flying Wells neighborhood. Uh, we're on Roslyn uh, Way, which is uh, certainly a tribute to President Carter and Mrs. Carter. Uh, we named it that because we bought uh, the property during our 39th year as a habitat, and he was the 39th president. So it has a really great tie. I would imagine most of these were being built in 2020, perhaps uh, earlier this year as well, during the pandemic. Uh, how has yeah. that had an impact on the construction? Well, um, in October of 2019, when we started the neighborhood, uh, we thought we'd be done a lot quicker. But the pandemic has really impacted us with the number of volunteers that we can have on, on site, uh, the number of uh, subcontractors. Subcontractors are almost impossible to get these days. The trades are really scarce here in Tucson. And the cost of the commodities used to build a house have escalated dramatically. We saw lumber take a huge climb. It's come down a little, but nowhere near the levels it was pre-pandemic. We're still looking at three, four, five times the cost for some of our materials. And we're working with our vendors. We're looking, working with local partners and getting uh, whatever we can and securing things to the best of our ability. But it's slow. There are a lot of disruptions in the supply chain, uh, a lot of cost increases for a lot of reasons. So we're just doing what we can with the volunteers we have. And we have a really great core of volunteers that are out here every day. And we're making sure people get in houses when they really need it. The pandemic has really shown us how important the safety of someone's home is. My name is Jesse Neal. Uh, I moved into this house uh, about April, the end of April. Um, and right now I'm just trying to get into school. So that's what I'm doing. So what was your house hunting situation like prior um, to this house? I was thinking about using my VA loan at one point, but um, I got it provided an opportunity to get to work with Habitat and do sweat equity. And I always tell everybody about it, try to get people in the program and see what they can do, because I believe everybody should have a house if they want it. And as you know, house prices are booming right oh, now. Yeah. It's become really difficult for people, some people, to buy a house here in the city. How did this make a difference in your life? It's a blessing, man. Um, there's no interest on it. Uh, I get 30 years to pay it off, or I could do 15 if I choose to, if I choose to pay an extra. Um, it's just, it's a blessing. It's, you know, along with all interest rates going up and supply and demand, it's just, it's so nice to have a program that helps people out that aren't able to afford it, where it helps them able to afford it. We think land's going to be our biggest problem. We do have a small land bank, so we're good to build uh, this current fiscal year. We're building uh, 13 houses in, uh, in Marana. Uh, we'll work uh, near, the, um, near A Mountain the following year. Uh, we are just looking at small infill projects that we can do wherever we can get land. It, this project uh, kind of landed in our lap. Someone wasn't going to develop it. We were able to purchase it and uh, build here. So we're always looking for opportunities. Does it get depressing, challenging? What, <laughs> what uh, adjectives would you use? Well, I would say all of those things. It gets frustrating and discouraging, and it's very challenging. But we have amazing volunteers and donors that have really come through during the pandemic. And if you focus on the goal, which are getting families and homes, there's nothing better. Just you know, seeing the kids play here in the street, knowing that families are safe. So, in the end, there's a reward, and that reward is well worth all of the frustration. And you cannot provide houses for, let's say, tens of thousands of people, but for that one family, it sure is a big difference, right? Yeah, that's sort of the mantra on a bad day. One family, one day, right? So this year, we got six, 16 new families have moved into houses during the past year. Since the beginning of the pandemic, 19 families have moved into new houses, and we're excited about that. One of the other projects you have coming along is the Chuck Center. Can you talk to us about that, please? Absolutely. The Chuck Center is going to leverage two problems, the need for skilled trades in southern Arizona and the need for affordable housing. Currently, Pima College, JTED, many of the uh, unions and high schools have trade programs where they're building walls, they're wiring, they're doing plumbing, but on sort of fake you know, houses or, or walls that they then disassemble. Uh, the Chuck Center is going to allow us to build uh, during all weather conditions, fully climate controlled, uh, and it's going to allow us to train students on all of the trades. Well, we're building habitat houses that the wall sections then move out to the site. The other amazing thing about the Chuck Center is it's going to allow us to buy in bulk 
or when we see uh, lumber or doors or something that we use on a regular basis at a good price, we'll be able to get it, store it in safe conditions, and then use it to build more housing. I love this house. This is, I'm not moving from this house, though. So I'm planning to stay here till I pass away. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. It's a 50-year roof. <laughs> I have maybe 40 years left. Pass it on to the family after it's paid off. Then somebody else has a place to live.